Hang on a second, Pedro. I'm so sorry. I just want to make sure we have this running mm -hmm. and then I can give you more. <laughs> we can mm -hmm. talk more. Most important thing is to get this to work. Mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to change you to a panelist. Hang on. I don't know what you, whatever you sent me didn't work. All right, good. So Pedro, you have a terrible echo. It's not going to work, you guys. It's because I'm standing next to Pedro. Okay. It will work. I don't know what you fixed, but I couldn't get into it. How is it now? No, I'm here, but did you change something better? For yeah, it's better. Hey, Pedro. Okay, perfect. Hey, how are you? How are you good. doing? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks Thank for you. doing this for so, us. I apologize about that. Apparently, I had the setting on Zoom set so that panelists could not um, could not activate their video. So I'm so sorry. I had to go into the meeting settings and change that. It's okay. It's a learning process. We just probably should like when we do these events, we should just make sure we go on 30 minutes in advance. Yes, that's what, you're... That's what I do for anything with uh, others. So smart. I know. Stop it. Yes, you are. <laughs> um, all right. So I think um, I think our attendees are going to start to trickle in. Let how many? Do you know how many got... people? I see that there's eight on, so there must be five in the waiting room. Do you, is there right. a waiting? I don't, I don't have so, access to open a waiting room, but maybe you Yeah, do. let me go ahead. I think I do. Well, don't All open. Right. Well, do you want to open it yet? Or we should wait another Oops, couple I of minutes. I think I already, I think I already opened it. It's open. I think I just did. So, <laughs> so here we are, but we do have another, another minute. So while folks are joining us, um, they can settle in as we begin. Do you have this background for Pedro? You can put it behind him. That's nice. No, I don't think I have that. Okay. It's the NYP um, background. It looks really nice. All right, Pedro, are you comfortable in there? Everything's yes. okay? Yes, I am. Yes. Okay. So I guess Great. I'll, so I, I guess in one minute, I'll just, I, I don't, we have 11. So that means what? Is it just a few? Do, Emily, do you know how many people signed up? Yes, we had 50. Oh, good. Okay. So then yeah. we'll give it a few minutes. We'll watch as the participants um, join. And, um, Great. and then I'll introduce you, um, you know, the program, introduce Pedro, and then I'll turn it over to both of you. And I guess from what you sent me, it looks like you're going to be having an interactive dialogue. Is that the plan? Yes, absolutely. Okay. What are you making? Thank you. We're making three dishes, sancocho, arepas, and a sauce called aji, all of which I learned from Pedro. So I'm excited. Very exciting. Yeah. yeah. All right. So if you see me lurking outside the kitchen at about... <laughs> This. Please do. You'll know why with a little sad face on. Please do. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, we'll give it another. There's 14 people on, so that's only about 10. So we'll just give it another minute or so. I'm watching the numbers and then we'll start okay. by welcome. Very good. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you so much. And I'll look at the chat to see if um, there are questions. Perfect. Thank you. 
And then Ellen, I may ask you to move the spotlight around as, as you to spotlight Pedro. You already know how to do all that, I think. <laughs> so Pedro is on. I think um, that it's, I think that it's gonna be, let's see. You'll you see wanna, he's oh, on I, my I, phone. Okay. Okay, yeah, I got he's it. on my phone. So he'll his his box will appear as as Emily Burner because he's on my other cell phone. So we'll, we'll go from there. <laughs> okay, I'm introducing everyone to the two Emilys. Yeah, <laughs> I've cloned myself. Cloned to the M. <laughs> we know that for a super fact. <laughs> All right, well, it's 102. We have okay. about 15 people already here. So in the interest of time, I will get started. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ellen Bloom. I'm the Director of Community Affairs for Westchester and New York Presbyterian Hospital. I'm so honored to introduce um, our team, Emily Berner, who is our chef of the Peter X. Kelly Teaching Kitchen, and Pedro Arango, who is a lead environmental services worker with New York Presbyterian Hudson Valley Hospital. We're so pleased that both of them have come together today to help us celebrate National Hispanic Heritage Month, which started September 15th and runs till October 15th. Today, we are celebrating the history, the culture, and the contributions of American citizens whose ancestors come from Spain, Mexico, the Caribbean, and Central and South America. Latinos have a long and vibrant history in the United States and play a large role in shaping the future of our country. In fact, according to U.S. Census Bureau statistics, in 2060, 30% of our population will be Latino. Today, we are honored to have Pedro and Emily doing a program to, for all of you that will celebrate the culture and the recipes and the family memories that Pedro will be sharing with us today. He, Pedro um, is from Cali in Colombia and he is going to talk to us about his family life, his upbringing and his favorite foods. And Emily is going to be preparing complimentary dishes. So with that, I will turn this over to both of them to get started. Thank you both. This is incredible. And we are honored to see you both here today. Thank you so much, Ellen. And uh, welcome everyone to the Teaching Kitchen. It is an honor to share this space with Pedro today. Um, Pedro, I would love uh, for you to just share a little bit uh, before we even begin with our recipes, just a minute or two. What were some of your memories of growing up in Colombia? Is there anything that you'd like to share with our group today? Yes, uh, one of my favorite memories growing up was about the holidays. And like Christmas Day or New Year's Day, we used to go to this huge river and cook outside in like a wood and like a wooden fire, you know. And we always made some coach. It's a typical dish from my city. And all the family get together, the friends, neighbors. So everybody meet up over there. Everybody brings something to it. You know, like everybody chip into it. And the older lady from the neighborhood, she's the one in charge of making it. And you know, everybody have, a, have fun. You swim, you eat, you run around, you know? So that's like a typical Christmas day and New Year's day for lunch, you know? That's what we do. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. And that's, I can just picture you like as a young child, you know, running around on the riverbanks and enjoying Sancocho. So Pedro, we're going to be making Sancocho today. And um, this is a recipe that you've made traditionally in your family. So you're going to have to guide me a little bit as I, you know, as we cook together um, mm -hmm. and, and share what are some of the things that you make different, like how do you make your Sancocho um, different from the one that I make and if there are any um, differences for example we're using a jalapeno pepper today so as I prepare that and get that ready um, with what kind of hot peppers would you add to your sancocho I mean we use a little one it's called ají that's the ají. one that we yes that, that we use 
We don't use that much jalapeno, but we use the little ones called ají. And it depends, depends what color is how hot it is, you know? So the red ones are the hardest, the yellow ones are okay. And the green ones are a little bit sour, not too spicy. So we, yeah. we use those, we use the three of them together. Yeah. That, awesome. that goes by depends how your family like. A lot of people don't like spices or they can't eat spicy food. So we don't use them. Yeah. So Pedro, you and I were chatting a little bit about, you know, some of the fruits and vegetables and things that you, some of the foods that you miss from Colombia because you can't necessarily find them here. What are some of the, some of the staples in every kind of, you know, in every kitchen in Colombia, are there any kind of like spices or herbs or foods that are really typical um, in uh, Colombian kitchens? We use a lot of cilantro. Yes. We use a lot of <laughs> azafrán. And we use a lot of cominos. Comins, I think is the name of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. We use that. That's like our everyday thing in the kitchen. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like you said, we are definitely going to be using cilantro today. Mm -hmm. uh, we have it both in the sancocho and also in the sauce that we're making, the ají sauce. So the three dishes that we chose today, the sancocho, the ají, and the arepas. Could you tell us a little bit more um, about, about them and, and, you know, why you chose, why we chose these dishes together today while I slice up the onion? <laughs> I mean, the sancocho, like I say, is like a typical dish from my city. And on Sundays, family get together, they all at uh, grandma house, and they that's what they make. You know, like mm -hmm. a big part of, of the of the soup, right? So it brings good memories, like uh, the good times when everybody gets together, they get to, you know, after a long week of work or school, you get to see yeah. your uncles, your cousins, your grandma, your grandpa. <laughs> So it's like a like a fun time where you forget about the the rough week that you have or, or about the problems that you had during the week or mm -hmm. stuff like that. So that brings good memories for me. Yeah. So it's a very like nostalgic kind of soup, right? Yes. Like it's something, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It it yeah. it goes straight to the heart. So um, <laughs> so we're just gonna start off by sauteing the onions and the jalapeno. And Ellen, if you'd like to shift the spotlight to the cutting board here, I'm just gonna show everyone how to um, dice up some garlic and some green pepper as well. I can see if I can try to shift the spotlight as well if, um, if it's tricky. Let me see if it can help. So we're just going to start by, um, and as you all notice, I wore gloves when I was um, just cutting up the jalapeno. And that was because I really want to make sure that I don't get any jalapeno on my skin because it's kind of, um, you know, it's, it's kind of spicy. So if you get it on your skin, then you touch any part of your face, then it might become uh, a little bit uncomfortable, <laughs> let's just say. <laughs> So you want to be careful with that. So um, I'm just going to cut up this garlic and I added already four cloves and I'm going to just chop up one, one clove to just show you, right? So a nice rough chop, that's nice and easy. And then we're going to get started on the green pepper. So I'm going to move things along pretty quickly here. I'm going to take out the seeds. And um, just remove all of the seeds so that they don't end up in your soup as best you can. All right. And here, you, you know, we're using the green pepper today, but Pedro, if you didn't have green pepper, would it be okay to use a red pepper or a yellow pepper instead? Yes, it's okay. It yeah? doesn't matter. It would be okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So any kind of, you know, bell pepper that you have, I'm going to chop it up and add it in. And I love this stew because it really is kind of like a one pot wonder. You know, it's got everything is just going into the pot. And um, it's got, it's a very complete meal because we have 
lots of vegetables, right? With the pep, green pepper, with um, the tomato that we're gonna add as well. And it has some nice um, starchy vegetables as well. So it's kind of got a, a good blend of, of um, flavors. So we're adding this green pepper. And if you're following along, we're just on step one here. We're gonna go ahead and stir that up. I did have a little bit of um, olive oil on the bottom, but Pedro, you mentioned that olive oil is actually not, uh, not typically used in Colombia. Is that right? Yes. yes. Yeah. I mean, in a middle class to low class, it's very, it's, um, it's very expensive to, to get olive oil back home. Right. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what kind of cooking oils do you typically use um, back home? Since olive oil vegetables is, or corn yeah. oil. Vegetable oil or corn oil. Yeah. yeah. So I guess you could say the most kind of traditional sancochos are going to be made with those kinds of oils. And yes. um, we're using olive oil because fortunately in the United States, it's not as expensive as in Colombia, where it's really very expensive in Colombia. Probably has to do, you know, maybe it, it has to do with um, it has further to travel or something like that. Yes. So I'm going to chop up. I have two little potatoes here. I'm going to cut these up into kind of rough, rough chunks. And as you saw, I just peeled them up quickly with the with the vegetable peeler. Um, what do you think, Pedro? Could you leave the peel on if you wanted to? Yes, it's okay. Usually yeah, we sorry. do it like that. We don't peel them. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So there's like like we're about to find out, right? There's like a yes. hundred different ways to make sancocho. I'm putting the potatoes in too soon. I should be putting the tomatoes in. <laughs> so let's put the tomatoes in there. Let them break down a little bit. But everything just kind of gets tossed together. Now, these are some ingredients that we are not, um, we don't always use in the teaching kitchen. I'm not sure if anybody here can guess what this is. I know, Pedro, Zuka. you can. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yuca. So yuca is this sort of like similar to a potato. It adds a really nice starchy flavor. I love yucca. I think it's just something about the texture is really good. Um, so we're gonna add this in in a minute. I just wanna um, stir this all together, get it kind of cooking down a little bit. Have it on like a medium, medium high heat. Smells really good already. You can add a little pinch of salt in this stage. You don't need much. Um, and we're gonna add the chicken. So this recipe calls for skinless chicken thighs on the bone. But if you didn't have chicken thighs, Pedro, could you use different meats for this or um, a different cut of chicken? Yes. You can yeah. use, you can make it either sancocho with fish, pork, beef, or chicken. Beautiful. I love mm -hmm. that. So it's really a versatile kind of like one pot or any kind of meat yeah. you can go in. Mm -hmm. So I'm just seasoning this Oh, you this can chicken. mix it. You can put yeah. the pork, the beef, and the chicken. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. That sounds really yeah. good. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I'm just adding a little bit of ground cumin and some salt to this. And we're going to go ahead and toss these right in the pot. All right. And Pedro, if I'm doing anything that you think I should do differently, you are the authority on Sancocho. So... I defer to your expertise. Now, when we spoke on the All phone, right. you like a master of it yeah. already. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. trying to learn. I'm trying to learn, right? We're all just mm -hmm. trying to learn. So we yeah. got the chicken in there. We're on step four. We're going to add the yuca. So this recipe calls for one small yuca. This yuca was, was double in size. <laughs> so I peeled and chopped it already, but I'm going to show you how I did that. So don't worry. I'm going to add the yuca. I'm going to add some green plantain. So look how green the skin is of this plantain. Mm -hmm. And um, the green plantain is the same as the ripe plantain. It's just less ripe. The same way you may buy a bunch of bananas and they're really green. Eventually they turn kind of ripe. Well, the same thing is true for plantains too. Just don't get them confused with bananas because they won't work for this recipe. <laughs> So, uh, so you want to take off the top and the bottom and then cut your green plantain into pieces about this thick. And then this is how I peel them. I kind of go around with a knife because it's really hard to get the peel off. Pedro, do you have a different technique or you, you kind of do it the same way? No, we do it different. You put, you get the whole green uh, plantain and you put the knife from one end to the other one. 
and then yeah. with, your, with your thumbs you open it. Okay. And cool. then gonna... you chop it. With, I mean, you cut it with your with your fingers, with your hands. You break it in yeah. pieces. Mm -hmm. Bring it into pieces. So that's yeah. how I do the ripe ones. But sometimes I find the green ones, the skins are really hard to get off. So that's why I show that technique too. But mm -hmm. for the yellow ones or the, the darker they are, the sweeter, I make like a mm -hmm. little slit in the side. And then yeah. like you said, I pull it off like a jacket. Mm -hmm. There you go. So this is a lot easier to peel than the green ones, which are kind of tough. Mm -hmm. And then this is just going to get cut up into small pieces and added in with everything else. So we are on um, step four, and we're about to add the chicken broth. The plantain is really slippery, so I am going to rinse my hands. We're going to add some of this famous herb. So this is like you mentioned, Cilantro. Pedro. Yeah, Cilantro. you got it. Cilantro. Mm -hmm. So we are going to be adding that about half of it. I like to do half in the in the um, in step four. And then the other half at the end, because then you kind of get it cooked in with the flavors. And then you get a little like burst of fresh cilantro on the top. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and chop that up and add it in. I put the stems in. Pedro, do you add the stems or you take the stems off? Uh, I do the same like the way they did it right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you throw the stems in too. Yes. Yeah. It's just good flavor. A lot of people take the stems out. But if you just chop it up, it's, I don't know, for me, it's good. Mm -hmm. All right, we're ready to add our chicken broth and cover everything and let it cook for about 30 minutes. Wow, it smells really good. So I'm going to turn that heat up so it comes to a boil. Once it's boiling, I'll turn it down and let it simmer, right? So I wonder, Pedro, we are letting this simmer for about 20 to 30 minutes and then we'll add the corn and the rest of the cilantro. Is there, you know, I'm kind of picturing this, this painting that you drew for us of everybody hanging out around the wooden fire with the sancocho on the fire. Is it one of those dishes that you can kind of let simmer for a long time and the longer you let it yes. simmer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> I had a feeling. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So you just kind of hang out mm -hmm. and simmering over there. It's doing its magic thing all on its own. So if you wanted to, for this recipe, you could probably turn the heat down and let it simmer, you know, all day, as long as you remember, you know, that it's there and you don't forget <laughs> and leave the house. Yes. <laughs> all right. So we're going to, I'm going to show you how to break down this corn. I'm just going to take off a little bit of the top. And it's really the end of corn season. So take advantage of it because, you know, it's still around. You can get it locally um, at farm stands. And um, it's still very flavorful and yummy this time of year. So I cut off the top and the bottom. And then I peel off the skins this way. And remove the silks by twisting. It's kind of a very quick and easy way to get the corn cleaned. So there you go, corn's clean, nice and simple. Try to get off as many of those little silks as you can. Not because they're not edible, but I find they kind of like get stuck in your teeth and it's not very comfortable or enjoyable. So, uh, so I try to, to get those pieces off. And then we're actually gonna cut the corn into pieces, leaving it on the cob. I like this, um, this technique, Pedro, because the cob of the corn actually has a lot of flavor. And yes. sometimes we just take off the kernels, but the cobs get thrown mm -hmm. away. So I often recommend to people, you know, if you're gonna be using corn, try to use it with the cobs too. Um, either like this, or if you're gonna take the kernels off, put your cobs in some hot water and just make like a, a corn broth. You can cook pasta in it, you can cook rice in it. Mm -hmm. um, it makes it really sweet and delicious. So. I don't know if you like to do that too, but I try to use it all up. So you'll see I'm kind of rolling around and then push it through. There we go. So we're going to add these in a little bit later because they don't take as long to cook. So I'll pop that in with the cilantro. Just checking in with our audience. Are there any questions or anything, Ellen, from anybody so far? If you want to... Um, not really, but I, I did want to ask Pedro. So, Pedro, what dishes do you cook for your family now that you're here in this area? What are your favorite dishes that you've, you know, brought to your family? 
I mean, I don't cook that much because oh. I work, I got two jobs, so okay. I don't have enough time. But when I do have time, my kids love a lot like the like the beef stew, mm-hmm. rice, and red beans. They nice. love it. Yes, they love that. And also for breakfast, we get the arepas. That's one of the things they we're going to yeah, make right Emily's now. Emily's going to make. Oh, very nice. Yes, arepas. And also we mix the eggs with the rice. Like we put the, we cook in the rice and then we throw mm-hmm. the eggs and we mix it. So it's like a, like for breakfast, we use it with arepas. They like that too. And also my family, like my father, my stepmother, my sister, they love the ceviche. It's mm-hmm. made with shrimp. So that's the mm. it's easy, fast, and good. <laughs> Very nice. And, mm-hmm. and is there anything like special? Somebody, um, Somebody's asking if you would eat bread with this. Is there anything special that goes alongside that complements the dish? With the, with the sancocho? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, we eat it with rice and mm-hmm. avocado and mm-hmm. arepas. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I had another question for you, though. You, you talked about in, I was reading some um, information about you and how you climbed mango trees and ate mangoes. Oh, yeah. That's what yeah. my, I, I love mangoes to add them to things. So I'm yeah. curious, are you adding, you know, is that something that you commonly use? Is that something that you add to your dishes? No, we we don't like we don't use it on dishes like that. But it's like a regular fruit that we, you know, when you little, you used to sneak out in your neighbor and your neighbor back a uh, backyard, climb on the trees, take up mangoes and go back home, you know. But yeah, that was a good experience though. <laughs> okay, I miss that. And Emily, is there a trick to um, sauteing jalapenos without burning our little eyeballs off? <laughs> <laughs> That's a fair question. I would say don't put your face near the pot. You, <laughs> you think to, the goggles might help? Yeah, so, you know, so you get your swimwear out, bathing cap, whatever you need. Okay, but, um, but I often suggest not, like mixing it with other, other things. So okay. if you just have it, uh, you know, on the heat on its own, it's going to be a bit overwhelming but here it's mixed with the onion the garlic the green mm-hmm. pepper all of it together so it's not really going to be too overwhelming mm-hmm. okay thank you all right mm-hmm. so uh, i'll jump back to the recipes here let me see if i can adjust we're going to be making the arepas from scratch as uh, as you said pedro mm-hmm. and um and arepas are are they are made from corn let me see yes. if I can adjust the, okay. I'm not sure if I can adjust the spotlight. Can I? Um, we can see you, Em. It's, it's. Oh, great. you can. Okay, great. Yeah, I'm sorry. You're both side by side. It's all good. Oh, perfect. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I, I see it on my phone. So everything. No, I was, I was, yes. Yeah, <laughs> I figured you were watching so, on your phone, but on a computer, yeah. you are both very, great. very lovely. Great. Together. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, so we're working with masa arepa and this is a particular kind of corn flour. So masa arepa is different from masa harina. If you're not, if you've heard of masa harina, that's usually, um, the kind of flour that's used to make tortillas, but not arepas. And you can find masa arepa in, um, I found it in peak scale at the sea town. A lot of grocery stores, carry it now. But masa arepa is this pre-cooked corn flour that's really used to make arepas. Um, So I'm going to go ahead and add some water to our flour. And it's super, super finely ground. I'm going to start with a cup and just kind of mix it together. We're going to add some salt and some oil, just about a teaspoon. And Pedro, you actually told me that that you don't usually make your own arepas and you mm-hmm. they sell them already like yes. already made so if yeah. you wanted to take that shortcut you know i'm sure we could probably find them as well if you wanted to to find the ones that are already made but it's fun to make things yourself right so yeah actually i never made arepas myself my grandma always did but like i said i i buy them and just put it in the in the stove it's easier like that <laughs> faster yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It is, but it's really fast to make them yourself too. So I'm, I'm excited because I'm just, you know, just learned for this class how to make arepas and I've been studying it. And, um, 
and it's really quite quick. You just have to kind of mix this together and let it rest for about five minutes. And then we're going to cook it on a cast iron pan. So it's pretty, pretty quick as well, at least faster for me than driving to the store. And uh, masa arena is, uh, I'm sorry, masa arepa is, um, is really now widely available. It's something that, um, I don't know if you could find it even five years ago, but now it's everywhere. So just kind of kneading this where do together. I the arepas? Yes, Pedro, where are uh, the locations you, up here? You can get it in, in the sea town in Pigskin. You also can get it in ShopRite across from Walmart. Thank they you. Got it. It's different brands. One of the brands, the, the brands is La Fe. Those are the mm -hmm. best ones. L-A space F-E. Those are the best ones for the pre-made. And they also got the tropical ones. And there's another one that got like a little piece of cheese inside. But oh, so the good. Cafe brand are the best ones. You can buy them in Sea Town or in Shoprite. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So as I was starting to say, masa arepa is this kind of pre-cooked um, ground corn flour that's really used just for the arepas. Um, and arepas are usually prepared on a griddle, but we're going to be using a cast iron pan because that's what we have here. They're eaten at almost any meal. And like Pedro said, you can fill them with cheese or top them with meat or vegetables. Um, and it's a really, it's a food arepa that's very closely associated with both Venezuela and Colombia mm -hmm. and um, and you know it used to be way back when that arepas were made by soaking the dried corn and then manually pounding the grains to remove the seed germ in the outer lining um, so the remaining part that's what was then cooked and ground and made into arepas now we don't have to do any of that work mm -hmm. you know it, it just comes in a bag like this which is you know, very, very convenient. Um, but the masa arena, which is often confused, that is corn flour that's been treated with lye and process. Um, the process is called nixtamalization. And it's like, if anybody's seen Mary Poppins, I don't know, <laughs> super califragilistic, right? It's like one of those words that's impossible to say, but you remove the germ and the outer lining and then it's ground. And, and um, so it's a little bit, there are some differences in these flowers. So don't make the mistake that I made the first time that I was making arepas. I bought, I tried it with the masa harina and it didn't, it didn't work. So um, let's give this a shot. We're going to start by heating up the pan, just getting it a little warmed up and it shouldn't be too, too hot because these are going to cook on each side for five minutes. So this is what they look like when they're done. It looks a bit like a Frisbee, but it's softer <laughs> on the inside, <laughs> definitely softer on the inside. And um, traditionally um, they use butter to, to cook this. I'm using clarified butter, which is known as ghee, but I think you could probably also use olive oil. Don't you think Petro, would that work? Yes. Okay, so if you wanted to make this even, you know, a little bit healthier, you could use the olive oil instead of, um, instead of the butter or ghee. So you're supposed to let this rest for about five minutes. I don't think it's been five minutes, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to try and see how it goes anyway. So I'll scoop this to the back so you can all kind of see the, um, the rolling cloth process. And as you see here, I've covered it with a little cloth. You don't want this to get too dried out. So that's why I often start with, you know, the one cup of water and then I add a little bit more water if it needs it. And how do you know if it needs it? Well, if the sides and the edges are cracking a lot, it's not yeah. going to stay together, right? So and also we're you start, can find the arepas yeah. in the refrigerator uh, by the cheese because somebody asked, where can you find ah. it at the supermarket? Yes, yeah, next okay. to the cheese on the refrigerators. Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. That's good to know. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. So we're just going to look, have a look at this and see, this should make enough for four arepas. I'm just going to go ahead and make one. It's a little bit dry. So you might need to add a little more water and it should kind of have like the texture of, I don't know, like Play-Doh or you yes. know, if anybody is <laughs> like that kind of texture. So everything should be holding together really well. I like to put it in, um, in like a little disc and put it on the parchment paper and then I close it up and I just press down and flatten it down. And it shouldn't be too thin because then it'll fall apart. 
um, but it shouldn't be too thick either because then it will not cook all the way. All so you kind of need that right, that balance. So here it is. You kind of want to tuck, I kind of tuck in the sides, make it a nice circle so it looks good. Has to look good if you're going to eat it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's our arepa. We're ready to put it on the stove. So again, I have a little bit of that ghee, clarified butter, and we're just mm -hmm. going to let that cook gently, medium, medium to, to mm -hmm. low heat for about five minutes on either side. And as it's cooking, I don't quite have this moved down, but <laughs> as arepas are cooking, they're always being moved around, right? Pedro, you explained to yes. me that arepas, you're always kind of moving them around as they're cooking. Yep. So, mm -hmm. um, so I just use, you know, my fingertips to, to move them around a little bit as it's cooking, but um, you could also use like, um, use a spatula if you want to be safe. That's probably a good idea. <laughs> And, um, and yeah, we're just going to let that cook for about five minutes on either side. Then once they're done, they look like this. And this can be used as a base for, you know, any kind of, mm -hmm. any kind of dish, really. What other things do you like to eat with your arepas? Uh, cheese. You put cheese on top. Like, you know, okay. you can eat cheese. You can, you can eat it with anything. It's like a, it's like a bread for us, you know, like with rice, yeah. with the soup, with the breakfast, with, with eggs, with cheese, with anything. Mm -hmm. And is there any special kind of cheese that you recommend? Um, typical Colombian cheeses, queso, you know? Yeah, hey, we got, it's called queso cuaja, but it's, okay. it's very hard to find it around here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very hard, yes. What is it like? Is it sort of like a mozzarella style or is no. it like crumbly it's like, a like black, rotija? But it's very oh, it's soft. Black. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Wow. Interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you ever found it here or not yet? In, Jer in New Jersey? Yeah. They, have, they had a place in New Jersey that they, you know, they, they sell it, but around here, no. Nope. No, not yet. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm, I'm very curious to go and find it now. <laughs> okay, so let's have a look at our sancocho. Smells really good. The um, plantains are starting to like soften a little bit and the yuca is too. Everything's getting nice and soft. So we can let that keep going for a little bit longer while we make aji. So Pedro, can you explain to everybody what is aji? It's like a homemade hot sauce. <laughs> Yeah, homemade yes. hot sauce. Yes. So, um, so we're going to be, again, using the jalapeno peppers, but mm -hmm. in your house, you don't use the jalapeno, right? No, we use, use the, the ají. The ají yeah. is called. Yeah. Yeah. We use those. So, we use lemons. Oh, nice. So mm -hmm. I'm using lime. And then, um, so I had a little confusion when I first uh, made this recipe because I didn't understand that ahi itself is both the pepper and the name of the sauce, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So just making sure I understood that. All right. Yeah. So, and that probably is because the sauce traditionally is made with this type of pepper. So mm -hmm. we're going to use our jalapenos. If you're not crazy about super spicy, um, super spicy food, do you think it would be okay, Pedro, to leave the jalapenos out? and just make it like a little milder. I mean, it won't be. It won't be yeah, the same. It won't be the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'll be good, but it will be something, you call it something different then, right? Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, okay. So we've got some cilantro. Yes. And again, with the cilantro, we're gonna chop it up. About a cup of cilantro is going in here. And apart from using ahi as a topping for the sancocho, what are some of the other things that you might use ahi for while I dice up a little bit of onion to put in here? With the empanadas. Okay. You put on the empanadas, in the rice. I mean, it depends, like, whatever you like it. If you like it in the rice, usually in the soup, you always eat it with the soup or the empanadas. That's the main thing that you eat the ahi with. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, got it. Yeah. Do you ever just like stir it into plain rice to give it a little bit of flavor? Yeah. I feel like that would yeah. be really good, right? Yeah, all the yeah. time. So I love it. Something so. that you can just kind of keep in your refrigerator. How long does yeah. it keep in the refrigerator for? Maybe 
you make it today for, for lunch. If you're lucky and it's something left, you save it for the next day. But because usually when you make it, it goes, you know, in one serve. Like everybody yeah. loves it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's not yeah. sometimes you gotta <laughs> make it daily. Wow. I remember my grandma make it daily. Every time she doesn't matter how much she made, the more she made, the more we eat. And did she make it in a blender? No, everything by hand. Wow. Mm -hmm. So she chopped yeah. everything up really, really chopped small and mixed yeah. it together. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then I So I'm I'm out. gonna be lazy so. then. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna just put it all in the blender. Mm -hmm. Um, Ellen, I just would like to check with you. Are there any questions from our audience or anybody? Um, I think we've answered all the questions, but um, okay. people are Great. definitely getting hungry watching. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do so, I have a question. Have you been back to visit your family in Colombia over the years that you've been here? Yes, I, uh, I've been back. Mm -hmm. you know, and how is that for you? Long, in like a couple of years because... My grandma now, she's able to come. So she finally got a visa. So she comes every summer now. Very so, nice. So she comes stay two, three weeks with me. Then she goes to Jersey to my aunt. Then she goes to my other aunt. So, you know, we all fight so for her. <laughs> what's your favorite dish that she cooks for you when she comes to visit? Sancocho. <laughs> yes, yes, Sancocho. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. And she make that, and she make another thing called tamales. But mm -hmm. uh, I mean, she's getting a little bit old, so it's a lot of work for her. But the soup, she always, you can never go wrong with that. Mm -hmm. So maybe now you're, you should be cooking for her. Yes, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> there is a, uh, Emily, there's a question. How healthy are the arepas as compared to bread? So good question. I mean, I think they're kind of similar um, because they are made with, corn which is you know it's a starchy kind of it's it's a starch and it um it's definitely not it doesn't have as much um you know of the whole part of the corn as I mentioned this corn has been processed and treated in a in a way so it's missing some of the you know the fibrous exterior and the part near the the core there so I would say potato, potato. <laughs> they're kind of, you know, they're kind of similar to, to a, a, a regular bread, but, um, but it's nice to get a little variety and flavor and things like that. Yeah. Good question. And thank you for the question. So I added some tomato in here. Let's finish up the ahi sauce. I have some scallions and I like to add the green parts and the white parts all together. What about you, Pedro? Do you have a preference? Yes, you do the same. Mm -hmm. You do the same. The whole thing. Yeah. It all goes in. But yeah. I like to leave like a little inch and a half at the bottom and then put it in some water by a window and it'll grow back. So you can make, make you know, a few batches of ahi. It takes, you know, a week or so, but it's kind of fun. It's a fun experiment, especially if, you know, you have small kids or around to see mm -hmm. it grow and come back so fast is really cool so we're adding our scallions we're going to add a little bit of sugar and a little bit of salt not much you really don't need much in this mm -hmm. recipe we're adding some white vinegar and you can see on occasion i'm back here kind of checking on the arepa flipping it over <laughs> flipping it over again right so it's a little bit of like a dance when you're making arepas we're going to add some oil. You can use uh, avocado oil or vegetable oil or olive oil, any kind of oil. And then I like to kind of roll these lines to get them nice and soft, cut them in half. And citrus is something that, you, you know, if you're going to be cooking with it, don't grab it straight from the, free, from the refrigerator because it's going to be cold. And when lemons and limes are cold, they kind of keep all their juices inside. So you want to let your citrus sit at room temperature if you can, if you remember to, you know, at the start of your cooking, take it out and let it get a little bit warmer. Um, some people put them in the microwave. I've never tried that, but to get more juice out of them. But um, this is nice and, and juicy now because it's been sitting out for, you know, about an hour or so. So you want to get as much of that. And you said you use lemon. You use both. Mm -hmm. Use both. Okay. Yes. Yeah. 
So I guess if you didn't have lime juice, you could use lemon juice and, and vice mm -hmm. versa, right? Yeah. So let's add that fresh, fresh flavor in. This is going to be really, really nice sauce. Can you freeze this sauce? If you wanted to like put it in a little ice cube tray and freeze it and throw it in with some rice when you're cooking it, maybe? So. No. <laughs> no? No. Yeah, you don't know because it goes too fast in your house. Yep. Everybody just eats it, right? <laughs> yes. So let's put the corn in here and the rest of the cilantro because we're coming up on the end of our time. And um, we're just going to let that kind of simmer for a few more minutes as we finish the ahi. Our arepa is pretty much done. So I'm going to turn the heat off over there. And I always like to put a little towel on top of the blender. Mm -hmm old habit, I guess, but just to kind of get that sauce. So do you, do you make this smooth or chunky? How do you like to make it in your house? I mean, it depends. Like, usually it's like more, it's very like watery. Mm -hmm. Watery. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can always add a little bit of water to it, right? Yeah. If you want it thinner. All right, let's add some water. Let's get it the right texture. One question. Um, Emily, you didn't make the favorite part of my meal, which is dessert. But there is a question. <laughs> Pedro, what is your favorite so Liz, dessert? Yeah, I saw the question. So dessert, <laughs> we don't have that many dessert. I mean, we had rice pudding. Mm, that's rice a good one. Rice pudding with, with um, how you call them? I forgot what we put. We put a little bit of cinnamon on top, like, like powder. And also we put, oh my God, I can, can't remember the name. I forgot the name. Do you remember it? Do you remember yeah. it in Spanish? Yes, pasas. Pasas? Yes. Like pasteles? No. No. Oh my God. <laughs> well, you well, know, we'll have to. A good sign yeah. that you eat healthy. Raisins, yes, raisins. <laughs> there Somebody you go. <laughs> that. Yes, raisins, yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. All right, well, we have yeah. about two more minutes. Are you going to blend that up, Em? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this looks Pour good. Out. I just blended it. It's now kind of that right texture, right, Pedro? Yes. Look good? <laughs> awesome. So the ahi is done. That's such an easy, easy one if you're using a blender. I can't imagine your poor grandmother doing this by hand. <laughs> oh, my goodness. She must be an amazing, amazing chef. <laughs> and um, let's check on the sancocho. Let's put that in a bowl and see what it's mm -hmm. looking like. It smells really good in here. I have to say that with the, the yuca is really soft now. The plantains are soft. The chicken is definitely cooked all the way through. So I would just, you know, take Pedro's advice here, right? And um, if you wanted to, just let this simmer in the back of your stove for a long time and just kind of, as long as it doesn't get too dry, you know, yeah. you want it to be like a nice stew. So I'm going to put this in the bowl for everybody to see. And the corn is cooked now, right? So you have these nice big pieces of corn kind of floating around. It looks really nice. So here's our sancocho. And we'll do what Pedro said. We'll take a little bit of the ahi sauce. That goes mm -hmm. on there. Do you usually put more? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's put some more. <laughs> Make it spicy, right? And then we have our homemade arepas. This one's the one that's on the griddle. It's warm. It's kind of like crispy on the outside and, and tender and soft on the inside. So it looks, mm -hmm. it looks really, really good. So there you have it, everybody. Our beautiful Colombian-inspired menu Ow. from Pauli, yeah. from Pedro mm -hmm. and his family. And we're so, so grateful to, to you all and to Pedro and Ellen for Thank being with you. us today. Thank uh, you. Ellen, any <laughs> final words or Pedro? Yeah. yeah well, I see a, a nice um, participant is asking if Pedro is getting to try the food, and I'm assuming he yes. will. <laughs> and no, I wanted to thank you, Pedro, for sharing your culture, your comments, and some of your life with us today. It was really, really nice to hear from you. I know I see you here often, and yes. you know this is a really nice part to know about you thank and you, your family. You. So thank mm -hmm. you. And as always, Chef Emily, great job. The food looks amazing. Um, 
okay, I may sneak up there in a little bit, but in the meantime, everyone, um, I think you all have the recipes. Let's all go out and try it. So thank you all for being here today. We really appreciate it. And again, this was in celebration and recognition of Hispanic Heritage Month. Thank you thank both. You. This was a great afternoon. Mm -hmm. Take care. Thank Bye, you. Bye. Bye.